Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. I am super excited to be here today. I'm going to share with you one of my kitchen secrets, a recipe I am so passionate about and I talk to so many people about how to make this dish. I'm going to share with you how to make the most amazing Italian beef ragu, okay? Gone are the days where you need to buy 500 grams of mints. I promise you this is going to change your world. Now, we're also going to be giving away a new pan. So I've got one of these wonderful, shallow, four litre masterclass pans in Hunter Green. If you want to win this, and I promise you, once you've got it in your kitchen, you will use it all the time. All you need to do is like, share and comment in the video below. Next week, we will randomly select somebody to win one of these pans and Masterclass, my sponsors who helped me make this program possible, will send you one of these. So make sure, like, share and comment in the Masterclass feed. Right, onto the ragu. So let's get this wonderful pan on the heat. Get it nice and hot. Always got to start. Get your pan on, get it hot. Now, ox cheek we'll get to in a minute, okay? What we're going to do is talk about the beginning, the holy trinity. We need onion, carrots, and celery, all right? These together, they're like the basis, the backbone of depth of flavor, all right? So, let's get our celery going. We've got Carlos on the edit today. I know he's watching very closely on how to make this. I feel like this is a dish you might make, Carlos. I'll try. Yeah? I'm always trying, like, I'm always keen to try and do and uh, taste new flavors. Yeah, 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 sure. So, celery, I've cut it in half and then into matchsticks. Now, always remember, when I'm cooking, please, if you have any questions at all, post them in the comments below and I will reply and if I can help with any culinary conundrums, I will, all right? And that's what I'm here for. So, I've thought I'd just do this recipe because it was something I wanted to cook anyway for the family. And I thought, you know what, let's stick the cameras on. Carlos was here. Everything was pointing towards make an Italian ragu today. So, off we go. So, celery. Do you use ox cheek in Spanish cookery, Carlos? You don't know. No? I never Not that you know of. Do you have a lot of beef in Spanish cookery? Because obviously I know pork is very, very popular in Spain, isn't it? Yeah, it's more popular as a chorizo or ham. In charcuterie yeah. rather than so cooking with yeah. it. Oh, okay, fair enough. It's a place on my area. Mm. It depends uh, in Spain. We, like more sense of Spain, mm. we use more meat that we do on the Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. So I'm going to cut the carrots into strips, okay? It makes it much easier and much safer. I'm also using the 20 centimeter Cook's knife here. So if, you, um, if you're in the market for a new knife, I could highly recommend these. They come with a sheath, okay? So this black sheath has a little sharpener in there. So every time I put it away, it sharpens. Every time I take it out, it sharpens it. A sharp knife is so important in a kitchen because everything is a lot easier with a sharp knife than a blunt knife, okay? So, chopping them into little matchsticks. The smaller you chop all this, the quicker it will cook, okay? Now, you could put all this into a slow cooker if you wanted to. You know, if you're a busy person and you haven't got time to do all this, chuck it in a slow cooker and just let it do its thing. Go to work, go out for the day, go for a walk, and come back and you will have the most incredible ragu as well. But I thought I'd show you the old school way. We'll get it in the pan and off we go. So, carrots, here we go. There we go. So nice and finely diced the carrots. There we go, that's gonna give us our little bit of sweetness. So we've got savory from, onion, from celery, we've got savory from onions and sweetness from carrots. Okay, so our onions finely diced one way and you'll see I'm not cutting all the way through the onion. I need it to hold together while I chop it, okay? And because my knife is nice and sharp, 
it's effortless. I just glide through the onion. All right, chopping onions is, is a really good practice for kitchen. So if you need to practice your knife skills, chop loads of onions, make a French onion soup, and then you've got a really good dish and you've had loads of practice. Okay, so there's one half and there's our other. Now, I went to the supermarket yesterday and I bought some ox cheek. I saw it in the supermarket. You don't see it very often here in the UK, but it was there. So I thought, right, we'll have that. And to be honest, I then went and looked at how much minced beef was versus how much an ox cheek was. So what are we? March 22 at the minute. This ox cheek was £2.74, all right? 300 grams of beef. Now, you could buy 500 grams of minced beef and you would feed exactly the same. Because ox cheek is quite rich, you generally don't eat as much of it and you certainly don't need as much. So, actually, you're making a little bit of saving by buying ox cheek over minced beef, okay? So, Pan's nice and hot. Let's get a little bit of pepper and salt onto our beef. It's really, it will take a good amount of black pepper. So I've done the salt, plenty of pepper, and then into the pan, okay? Get that nice and hot and get it searing. It's really important to get the color on the beef, all right? Loads of color, don't be afraid to crank it up full heat. I've got this on full whack. Just have a little white round. Keep tidy. Tidy as I go. Okay. While that's just searing, the herbs that I'm going to use today is rosemary and I'm going to use some bay. Now generally bay doesn't need chopping because you kind of fish it out afterwards. You don't really eat the bay much. So I'm just going to roughly chop the rosemary. That's it. That'll do. And then I've got a whole bulb of garlic, all right? I'm just going to nick the top off. Do you see that, Carlos? All I've done is take that little bit off. That's going to release all the garlic flavor and let it really smooth and mellow out as it cooks. Okay, so let's have a little look at this beef. Because it's on full whack, it's not going to take long to get that colour on there. But what it does do is it takes a long time to cook, all right? You need to give this... <coughs> Excuse me. What you have to remember is, although it doesn't take long to get that colour caramelisation on there, ox cheek takes a long time to cook because as a muscle it never stops working with cows. All right, so the harder the muscle works, the longer the cook. Right, so let's turn it over. So we've got some color on there. And now time to add in our ingredients. So in with our onions around the beef, all right? In with the carrots all the way around. Let the beef have contact with the pan, all right? There we go. Let's just get everything else. So in with the rosemary. In with the bay. In with the garlic. We'll just give this a good cook. So the beef, the vegetables are in there. We've got our carrots, we've got our onions, we've got our celery, garlic, we've got rosemary, we've got bay leaf in there, and we've got our beautiful ox cheek. Now, they've just been cooking in the pan now for a few minutes, getting everything going, getting some of the moisture out. Time for some red wine, okay? So, in with 200 mils of red wine. Lovely, we're gonna let that cook out. Now, if you don't, if you don't drink alcohol, don't have to use it if you don't want to. All the alcohol will boil away, so there will be none left. But if you don't want to use it or you don't have it in the house, it's fine. Add a little bit more water um, and beef stock. So I'm going to add my uh, beef stock cube here. 
So I've got one of the little jelly ones, so we're going to add that in. That's going to give us a real depth of flavour. I've got some beautiful chopped Italian tomatoes here, which are going to be delish. Let's get those in. And then fill your can with water. We don't want to waste any of the residual tomatoes that are left in there. Let's get that in. And then I've got the kettle boiled. God. Everything's organized, Carlos, isn't it? I love it when this works. Enough water and liquid just to come up to the top of the beef. You don't need to cover it. That would be enough for me, okay? And then we're gonna get it up to the boil. And then we're gonna let this cook and simmer down until it is rich. When that ox cheek is like, when you can get a spoon and just break it, that is when it's tender and ready. There is no specific time, but it's going to take about two hours to simmer away. Now, if you don't want to leave a pan on the heat, absolutely fine. Make sure you put it in the oven, 160 degrees. I put my little um, rubber handles on my pan. Take those off if they're going in the oven. But this pan's great because everything goes in the oven. And this lid that you get with the pan has got these little dimples here. So as the moisture hits the top of the pan, it drops back down. So you won't over reduce the liquid. The liquid will stay in there. So you've got two options, hob or oven. It's entirely up to you. Okay, the ox cheek has been simmering now beautifully. Let me lift the pan lid off and you can see. I mean, how good does the kitchen smell, Carlos? Uh Oh, it has just sat. I put the lid on the pan and because of the technology in the pan, the little dimples have just allowed the liquid to go back. We've then just let some of that evaporate away and look, that ox cheek. Can you see, Carlos, how tender it is? Yeah. So if I lift that ox cheek out and let it just rest for a minute and we'll break it up, okay? Let's turn our attention to the pasta. Now, for ease, I wanted to show you, well, I wanted to make pappardelle pasta. Have you had pappardelle before? Yes. Yeah, so nice, thick ribbons of pasta, all right? Um, we can't normally get pappardelle in the UK supermarkets. It's not popular. You get spaghetti, linguine, and tagliatelle, and that's kind of it, really. But having spent loads of time in Tuscany, we have pappardelle everywhere and it's become my favourite. So all I'm going to do is, I've got these lasagna sheets, fresh lasagna from the supermarket, okay? Everything I bought today has been from the supermarket. I'm not always there, but I was dropping somebody off at the train station and I just hit the supermarket without my wife, without the kids, so I could buy what I liked. It was great. So pile all your sheets together and what, what would be that? About two centimetres, Carlos, yeah? yeah? Two centimetres, maybe an inch, depending on whether you're in old money or not. So we'll just cut the pasta. Now, don't forget, if you want to win one of these amazing pans, make sure you comment, like, and share the Masterclass UK Facebook page. Post your comments below this recipe like their page and share it with your friends to be in the draw to win these pans because I am going to draw it next week. So, I've got all my pasta, I've got my pappardelle, I've got my other pan here, salted boiling water, okay? It's really important that you get the salt in that water. This will take about two minutes to cook. Just enough time for me to finish this ragu. Okay, so ragu is reduced by half. I've got 30 grams of butter, because I thought I'd spoil us. I thought I'd spoil you, Carlos. Always. Little bit of butter in there, it just takes it from one level to the next. And that is why I work with Masterclass, because my job is to show you how to cook amazing recipes and take them to the next level really easily. It's not difficult, it's just a few little tips, tricks, pieces of equipment, things like that, helps you make the most amazing food. So that butter, I'm not gonna boil this sauce now. It's done, it's boiling and it's reducing. It now just wants to be warm enough to melt that butter. I'm now thinking bread, dunk, eat. 
but actually we're going to make it even better because we've got our ox cheek, all right? Now, if you can't get ox cheek, okay, go for shin of beef. And if you're going to buy shin of beef, buy it as a whole cut. Don't buy it diced because you will get a much nicer finished product if you buy it as a piece. So if I just show you now, Carlos, look, I'm carving this with a spoon, all right? Pip chose the wrong time to go and have a lunch, didn't she? <laughs> so if I actually squash that down, you can just see how it just breaks, all right? So I'm just going to cut a little bit of sinew off there because I know that needs to come off. But other than that, it's just going to break up, all right? So just carving it with my spoon. Here you go, Carlos. There's a little treat for you. Try that. That is just ox cheek, braised in red wine. How rich is it? It's got natural collagen in there. So it is just super rich, which is why you don't need to eat as much as you normally would, okay? So in it goes. Cut it into sort of little pieces, and it's just going to break up a little bit. There we go. In it goes. Is that the first time you've had ox cheek or not? Yeah. What do you think? I love it. Nice, isn't it? I had something similar on texture. This is probably what you say about the collagen. Yeah. Yeah, just. Yeah. It is. It's something special. I promise you. Okay, right. I'm just going to lift that out of the way. Okay, so let's turn the heat up just a little bit and I'm going to have a little taste myself. Oh yes. Oh yes. This is good. It's a good eating day today. Emily's missed the she missed a day, didn't she? She really did. I'll teach you for having a day off, Emily. <laughs> right. We've got our pasta. Okay. I like to add my pasta to my sauce, all right? So in it goes. Because I want this pasta to be, just be immersed in this beautiful sauce. It's got red wine, it's got garlic, it's got celery, carrots, tomatoes, rosemary, bay leaf. It's just, just good stuff, all right? Just really good food, good flavors. And then let's stir it up in the sauce. This is proper Tuscan style, this, in the way that it would be. So this is not really a bolognese, it's now a ragu. Okay, so you lift it up and out. There we go. And then I'm going to get some of the sauce. I'll just wash this spoon. Now, if you've got any questions at all, please post them in the comments below. I am here to help. I love chatting to you all while we're all watching the program. It's the highlight of my week. It's such a nice, pleasurable thing to do just to catch up with the world while we've been busy. So, spoon on some of that lovely ragu. There we go. And remember, if you want to win some masterclass equipment, please like, share, and comment in the program, and we will pick a random winner, and they will get some amazing masterclass equipment. Okay, so, I like to finish with a little olive oil at the end, extra virgin olive oil. It just gives that rich silkiness to it. And there you go. That is how to make the most amazing Italian beef ragu, a beautiful alternative to spaghetti bolognese. If you want the recipe, scan the QR code along the bottom. It will take you to masterclass.co website where we host all our recipes there. Now it's time for a masterclass from me. I want to share with you my tips and tricks on how to make the most perfect Victoria sponge that will always work Bake beautifully, taste amazing. I'm going to share with you the little points, tips, and so that you understand actually what's going on, so that whenever you make an incredible Victoria sponge, it's always good. And the great thing about a Vicky sponge is you can travel the whole year seasonally with this recipe. You know, you can add raspberries in the summer, you can add 
mince pie filling and cranberry sauce at Christmas. You can add blackberry and apple in the um, in the autumn. We did that, didn't we? We yeah. did the blackberry and apple crumble Ooh, cake yeah. based around a Victoria sponge cake. So you really can do all sorts. You know, January, February time, citrus, lemons, oranges, all that sort of stuff. You know, February, March, rhubarb. Make a nice rhubarb jam, custard, buttercream, and that'd be amazing. So let's nail the Victoria sponge first. So room temperature butter, 250 grams, okay? Really important is room temperature. And then I've got a blend of sugars, okay? So I've got, this is 250 grams, so it's a square recipe. So it's 250 butter. You could use margarine if you prefer. I know a lot of people like stalk. You like stalk, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I, butter or stalk, I'm, I'm no to either. Um, and then I've got a mix of 100 grams of granulated white sugar. I've got 100 grams of golden, and then I've got 50 grams of light brown. Now, this, to me, gives me more flavour and more depth, but not too much. If you used all light brown sugar, it becomes a little bit sort of darker and a bit treacleier. Whereas if you use a nice blend, you just get a bit more flavour. Um, so that's going to go in. And then we're going to mix. Now, I'm going to use a cordless mixer. It's my new toy. I love it. But this is where you have to take the time. I actually learned a lot of this from Mitch Turner on Britain's Best Bakery. She used to wax lyrical about her, her cakes. And bless her, she's made a few in her time. And I have sort of sat quietly and listened and applied it to my skill set. So the idea is that you really do spend the time getting these two ingredients to amalgamate together. Okay, so, once that scratching sound has stopped, that is when the sugar has dissolved into the fat and you've really got to listen out for that change. It becomes much lighter and fluffier and silkier and nice and smooth. It starts out really scratchy and then it sort of quietens down and smooths out a little bit. At that point we're going to add our four eggs. I've got four free range eggs here. I'm going to add them one at a time but make sure that it's fully incorporated before I add the next, okay? That is really, really important, otherwise it's going to split. Okay, so, first egg in. And then we mix. It's this point where you really need to take time to get it right. So now it's completely incorporated, so we're going with the second egg. Because I'm a show off. I was saying multitasking today. Nearly lost the shell then, nearly. For that, a man that can do two things at once. Fully incorporated. No splitting because we've taken the time. And it's really important that your eggs are at room temperature. They are far more elastic when they're at room temperature than when they're cold. And you want them to be elasticated. This is what holds the, egg, the cake mixture together and lets it rise. That is a question I'd like to ask. Do you have to put your eggs in the fridge? Uh, not in the UK. Uh, in America, they recommend that you put them in the fridge, but in the oh. UK, we don't. We don't. But from a technical, molecular point of view, an be. egg is more elastic when it's at room temperature than if it's in the fridge, and we want it to be elastic. Yeah. So it's important that you let your eggs warm up to room temperature before you bake with them. 
I did this in London yesterday. I talked about it in London, didn't we? Emily yeah. and I just returned from a, um, a trip in London. We were doing a show at um, the XL Centre down in Docklands. And we made this... I made a cake. Um, and spent a lot of time talking about this. Which is kind of what made me think, well, actually, we should really do a masterclass in this to, to make sure everyone's got all the tools they need to make perfect but what I want to do is show you how silky and smooth and it's fully incorporated okay so now what we need to do is get our flour oh, stop there, stop there, stop there. just do that spoon thing again so now you can see it's completely smooth it's homogenous and it's one texture in with our self-raising flour I always scatter it from a height a little bit, get a bit more air into it. You can sieve it if you want, but most flowers these days are already sieved before you get them. And now we are just going to stir and fold together. Okay? I'm also going to add a little bit of vanilla, which I forgot to do, but it's going in now. And then we fold. So we stir all the way around the bowl and then lift it into the middle. Now, it's really important that you don't beat the life out of this now because if you do, you'll develop the gluten and you end up with a much tougher cake. Whereas if you just fold it in, we're not going to develop the gluten. We're just folding it in. Okay? And this will give us a perfect cake the bicarb and the baking powder that's found in self-raising flour. Now, that reminds me actually, if you're in America or over, outside of the UK, you'll be looking at all-purpose flour. Now that is, to us in the UK, that's plain flour. So you will need to add some baking powder to your all-purpose flour to make this cake, okay? And all I would suggest you do is Google plain flour turn into self-raising and it'll give you a recipe. I'll tell you how many teaspoons um, of baking powder you need to add to make it into self-raising. You may well already know it. So. so there you go. Can you see that? It is just got that dropping consist consistency and it is ready to bake. Now you could add lemon zest to this. You could add um, lime zest, orange zest. You could add spice to it. If you wanted to turn it into a chocolate cake, you could add cocoa powder, but you need to remember that cocoa powder zaps moisture at cake, so you need to add a couple of tablespoons of milk to allow for that moisture absorption that cocoa powder gives. But you could do that easily, no problem at all. You can add a bit of coffee to it if you want a nice coffee cake. So there's all kinds of options. I'm going to do a standard one. Now, the way I always make this is I make two and I sandwich them together. But the way to do it is to weigh it, okay? I tear it and then go, right, okay, so one, two, three, four, that's 340 grams, okay? In fact, I'm gonna go up to 350 because I like a nice round number. Okay, now, also, if you want any of the recipes, please make sure you scan the QR code that runs along the bottom. Um, it'll take you to masterclass.co website and you'll get all my recipes there. And also, if you want to enter the competition this week, please make sure that you comment, like, and share this video with your friends and family on Facebook. That will help us spread the word and more people will get to see our programme and you get the chance to win some amazing equipment for your kitchen for a masterclass. So, 350 grams. Let's go with this tin. Let's tear it again and we want 350. One, two, three, and a bit. Ooh, three, six, four. Close. Now, as well, if you have any questions at all about today's recipes, please do post them in the comments below. I am there to help you with your kitchen. Uh, dilemmas or questions. We had loads last week about ostrich, as you can imagine. Um, but yeah, post them all in the messages below. We love to read all of them. Um, and any questions, I will get back to you with my best calling answer I can. 
So we're at 350 on both, and we've still got mixture left. So let's go to 400. In fact, let's go to 410. 420. We're going 425, Emily. How do you feel about that? 425. That one goes back on. You bake a few cakes in your time, don't you? Yeah. Not much do, anymore, do you? No. And do you know retired what? Retired baker this year. Yeah, yeah. 22 retired 22 baker. 22 year old retired baker. She's worn out. I never used to do my cakes like this. Did you not? I was bad and used to do the all in one method, but yeah. you can see I used I did change to doing it by mixing the butter and the sugar. Yeah, and, you can, <laughs> and you can tell the difference. Yeah. When you understand the molecular, yeah. and that's a big word for me, when you understand the science of what's going on and why you do things, it kind of makes you then change the way you do it. Yeah. Um, right, so all I'm doing is pushing from the edge, sorry, from the center to the edge and just getting the cake at a nice level. And what I'm trying to do is just make sure we get a really even bake on both cakes. So when we sandwich it together, it's exactly the same. Now, this is my masterclass in making Victoria sponge. What I've been doing with Poppy is exactly this, but we've been playing around with the batter and she wanted to make multicolours. So we've got six different coloured halves that we're going to make into one big amazing rainbow cake. We're going to flavour the buttercream with lemon cheese, which is like lemon curd, but from the north of England. It's got a slight few more egg yolks in, but it just means the buttercream is absolutely delicious. So I'm going to bake these in a preheated oven, 170 degrees in a fan oven. Okay? Give it a little tap. Sorry, Carlos. But editing the audio. And it in they go. Same oven, same temperature. There you go. That is a masterclass on how to bake the perfect Victoria sponge. So we've made these amazing different coloured sponges. This is our exact Victoria sponge cake, but all we've done is add some funky food colouring. The natural food colourings, so we haven't got any crazy E numbers that's going to make somebody go loopy. Um, but what we thought we'd do is we'd make a delicious buttercream. So, Poppy, in we go with our room temperature butter. Okay, so we're going to make a butter icing. So generally we work on a two to one ratio. So it's two parts um, butter to one part icing sugar. That whisked together will make a beautiful buttercream. From there, you can do what you like. Are you ready to cream that together? Right, off you go. Put it in and then turn it on. There you go. Yeah, I'll move out of your, your shot. Go. So, powdered uh, sugar or, or icing sugar, depending on where you're from. And it's just really about creaming it together till it's really like fluffy. Are you alright? Yeah. Do you want me to have a go? Yeah. Alright. Are you feeling a little out of control? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit. You just haven't got the gun, you see. Okay. It's control Wait, the machinery. I feel the vibration of the mixer. I want to see it again. Alright. With confidence and gusto. Use Go for those it, girl. muscles. Oh, muscles. So, we're going to flavour this buttercream with uh, lemon curd. This one's actually called a lemon cheese, which just means it's got a couple more egg yolks in it than curd would do. But it's really nice if you put a little bit of lemon curd in because you get that really lovely curd richness but you, you don't get the acidity of lemon but you get the nice sweetness of it okay so in with our do we have to mix it yeah with this yeah oh, yay. and you get to let do you get to let this food do you like lemon curd yeah i used to have it on toast all the time i could just, i used to have it on crackers plain crackers oh <laughs> You're a bit weird. It's the tip of the iceberg, isn't it, really? <laughs> right, so marble that in. Useful. Done? Yeah. Okay, right. So, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Let's put that to one side. Okay, time to decorate the cake. No, we're going to start with 
our purple. Yeah. Yeah. So you want a little bit on here. I'll do one, you do the next yeah. one, yeah? So spread that, you want a little bit. You don't want loads, just enough to stick the next layer on. Okay, you going for it? Yeah. Are you icing or am I? So you uh, need to I'll make sure they're nice and square. I'll put them on top. All right, I'll ice you top. Okay, so. Do you know what I was thinking? What? A bit of lemon curd on top of this would be nice. Yeah. Why don't you put some lemon curd on it as well? Yeah. Go on then. A bit more flavour. What do you think of the buttercream? Nice? It was very nice. Good. Lemon curd buttercream. Give it a little, should we give it a swirl like that? Ooh. Ooh. Fancy pants. Right, green. So please remember, if you want to enter this week's competition, to like, comment and share this video with your friends and family will qualify you for a draw. Uh, last week we gave away a set of canter pans, so the amazing new frying pans from Masterclass that are made out of aluminium cans, recycled. So they're on their way to somebody, we're going to message them and let them know they've won. The week before that was a 4 litre cast aluminium pan, my favourite. Somebody's won one of those as well, so they're out there, so make sure you enter. Right, this is going to be a big cake. I know. I'm not, not sure you're going to manage this cake. It's going to be too big. Probably Let's push not. that top one towards you. Towards me? Yeah. Have we got a bit of wonk on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that bit's just gone over the edge, so I'm just going to take that over. So we've got, hang on for one second, a little bit there, just to straighten us up. Bit of structural engineering going on today. That'll do. Just that extra little hit of flavour. It's going to be really nice. You could do it with jam as well if you wanted to. Would this be nice? Yeah. Right. Push it towards, pull it towards you a bit. Emily's giving us a structural engineering. I can see it from the camera. Sur view. A survey on the structural <laughs> integrity of our cake. There we go. This. This, this is not an everyday cake. This is a special one for someone's birthday or Mother's Day on Sunday. You could make this, couldn't you? <laughs> Luckily, your dad's already made it. Is that in the right place? Let's have a look. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Right, now it's time. No, because we've got to now encase it in buttercream. As you can see, we've managed to completely cover all the cakes in buttercream. Much to Poppy's pleasure, because she's going to get stuck into this at some stage. Now, we've iced this now to show you the finished item. What we're going to do is we're going to fridge this cake, let it sit, and then we're going to slice it and pull a portion out so that you can yeah. see all the layers. And then Emily, as always, will take a beautiful photograph of it. And you'll be able to get the recipe on masterclass.co or scan the QR code on the bottom. Make sure you enter this week's competition. You need to comment, like, and share this video with your friends and family to be entered. And we will draw a winner out next week. And we will message them direct to let them know what they have won from Masterclass. But thank you very much for joining us. And we'll see you on the next episode.